Okay, let's get started on today's class. But before we get started, very important announcement. Next week, Wednesday, woo, raise the roof. Mm -mm. <laughs> we have the master class uh, release day. My master class, yes, my master class. Um, I have been mastering my portraiture skills for a very long time and now I'm releasing a class that sums up everything I know all the most important fundamentals there isn't even 10 hour video that could contain all of the superior knowledge of my mind so I managed to condense it all into a very short five hours <laughs> but uh, but that is as much as I can condense and I know five hours is a lot of a lot for you know for a master class usually they're an hour um, but uh, but it is it is about you know my style. It is about my style of teaching, and I like to go through everything with a fine tooth comb and cover all the basic uh, fundamentals, the, the the foundation knowledge of light on form. Then moving into anatomy, then learning how to change the way you think, how to change the way you approach faces, and then learning how to critique yourself, and then changing from grayscale to color. There's just so much in that masterclass, and it's all going to be around eighty to ninety dollars. I will decide before then. Um, and it'll be available on my Gumroad, uh, which I will announce to you guys as soon as it's available. And um, I will have like a release video uh, released to YouTube. I'll have a couple of announcements here and there on Twitter and Instagram. So depending on where you where you are, you know, what you frequent online, there will be an announcement there. Um, but if you are interested in this, if you have a friend who wants to learn portraiture, and uh, learn it the right way. Um, you can entrust them to me and my master class. Uh, so please do get you know get it out there if you can. Spread the word um, that it'll be released June first. I cannot wait until it's done because it has been weighing on my heart and mind and shoulders for a really long time. I can't believe it's here. I can't believe it's done and it's ready to go. Um, I'm just going to run a couple of editing passes from now till Wednesday just to make sure it's perfect. But most likely it'll be available Tuesday night and then Wednesday I'll just do promos and stuff like that. Tuesday night, like Wednesday morning. Um, and yeah, I can't wait. Um, are you guys interested? What do you guys think? And uh, for future master classes of stuff that I am uh, skilled in, um, uh, there's working from reference, uh, there's sketching, all my sketching style and all of that. So hopefully um, uh, I can get to those as soon as I can. Um, but it was a lot of work to put into this master class. A lot of work goes into it. Um, so if you want all these announcements like Portrait Studio sale, oh yeah, it's gonna drop by June 1st. There will be no more sale. Uh, so if you want it, you gotta get it now. This is the lowest it'll be for a good six months uh, moving forward. Um, so uh, uh, Portrait Studio, um, my master class, all of that will be hosted through my store. Um, so Gumroad will be linked through my store, but it'll be available there. So go to istabrak.com and click on the store. And to join us on the Reddit, to get your work critiqued, to hand in your work for critique like the way I'm critiquing this piece today, click on the Reddit icon here at the top right. It'll take you to the Reddit. The Reddit is where I find everything to work on, but also where I put up announcements uh, for the next community challenge. Um, and all of that stuff. Uh, sales, everything is centered out of our subreddit. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys for listening to the announcements. I really appreciate when you guys don't skip over them because they're really important for the function and, and, um, and, and, you know, the life of the community. It's all about the announcements. So please don't skip them if you have a chance. Um, so let's talk about this piece here. When you experiment before you understand fundamentals, you are more prone to making mistakes. Those mistakes lead to bad habits. Where do bad habits come from exactly? Bad habits in art come from trying stuff that you didn't understand but somehow made it work and so you stuck with it or copying someone else's depiction of a fundamental without understanding the fundamental and then memorizing the step-by-step -step to make things look okay but really you'd have no idea how you made it look that good. That's what bad habits are really. That's where they come from. And then also line dependence, all of that stuff. Uh, so. One of the problems here is that you're trying to be painterly when you should just be either doing a study and sticking to the study and getting on to the next study ASAP or um, like uh, just using a proper brush if you're going to push it into an illustration. Right now you try to do illustration and use a textured brush. I mean, you're not even at that level yet. What do you like? You know, this is not something that you should be doing at this level. Um, 
you're still studying skin tones. So what I'm gonna do is turn it into an illustration, but I also wanna spend a moment or two talking about how you made these mistakes. You are setting yourself up for failure. I also opened up Portrait Studio and set up a simple, what I feel is a good pose for this dude. So he's this super majestic looking centaur slash um, uh, elf dude. And he's there's the blue behind him, so I'm, I'm guessing you indicated some kind of sky behind him. And I picked a, a basic pose that shows he's kind of a warrior, but like beautiful glistening warrior with hair that's just sparkling in the sunshine. So let's do something like that. But I don't like the pose of his neck because it seems very awkward. It feels like we're looking his face. It seems like we're looking up at him, but he's looking down. And though that's nice in itself, it feels like, you know, either make him looking forward to complete the heroicism um, uh, or... Or just like kind of make him look like looking down while also being heroic like something like that can also work and then just making him feel a bit more mysterious that is a bit too mysterious I would make the Sun kind of hit him like that that seems like a nice sunlight level so in portrait studio you can control all kinds of stuff you can control the light you can control the camera um, so I'm just moving the light around picking a light that kind of seems like midday or no not really midday would be like right about here um, considering there's also ambient reflections and stuff like that, but let me pick something that's a little bit less than midday, either side, either early morning or before sunset, just so that we don't have to lose too much. That's fine. And I'm just going to turn off his joints. Um, and then from there, where I just want to pick the right camera angle, like I talked about last class, like a low camera angle will really make him look heroic. And then I'm seeing his uh, his top knot kind of glow, uh, his his ponytail, or whatever, uh, kind of flowing in the wind. Um, and then the light behind him, sort of, with with his ears lit up, subsurface scattering slightly. Um, and then uh, like just just go from there. So. Uh, probably going to be a crop just above his hip line and that'll be that. Um, so I'm just going to take a screenshot of the model. The main stuff you want to think about when you're doing um, low angle with shoulders, so the shoulder line, is that the shoulder line connects to the collarbones in that angle. So clear canvas. So right here, do you see that? It's one line. Whereas in front view, you have shoulders, and then you have collarbone, and then you have the neck. <laughs> Excuse the sketch, I'm using my mouth. Um, so that, that's how we can tell that we're looking up at his shoulders from this angle, and the person here is like in love looking at him this way. So the shoulder line connects with uh, the, 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 the collarbones. So that's what we're looking for here. That's what we want to do. Okay, and his hair, based off what you drew before, was kind of brownish, goldenish. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's golden. I don't know. Um, and then I am just going to Photoshop the Portrait Studio model in there, just so I can save some time. So I'm selecting. No, oh, this is gonna be tricky. I should have just changed the background value of the portrait. Um. That's okay. Uh, oops. Select inverse, copy, paste, very small. And uh, I'm just trying to match the, uh, the scale. So I'm just doing this a lot nowadays just because I, I want to do those big critiques where things change in a big way. But I also don't have time to turn the class into a, a, an hour and a half. So I'm trying my best to stay within the six o'clock kind of uh, time limit. And then simple, just get color mode on your brush. Pick the skin tone, doesn't matter which one, just pick it and uh, brush it over. Then we can get a starting point for the colors. And what you want to do is basically blend out each plate. Let me... Uh, blend out each plate together so that you, what you have left behind is the right there like that 
is the natural transition from surface to surface. So you're just blending out the plate line, leaving behind the flesh, really. For those who want to photo bash, for those who don't, you'll know, you know, also based off where I'm blending, where to blend in your studies of, of the uh, Porsche Studio model. Obviously, we don't blend edges like this. This is an overlap edge. So don't blend overlap edges. And if you are um, rendering guys with muscles, you want to blend a little bit less just because they have more definition. And guys that are chubbier or just don't have muscle structure or thinner, they, they don't have that definition so you can over blend. But the Porsche Studio model is, um, he was manufactured to be sexy. <laughs> He's a very sexy man. So he's got a lot of muscles. He pulled no punches with the sexiness of Porsche Studio models. They are top tier. <laughs> A1. Um, respect the world of your canvas. Gotta write that down. Yeah, you have to believe that that sun is shining on a real thing and that real thing is going through something real. And that thing that it's going through is, is, is the best time to take a picture of it. There's a specific time of day where you can establish that mood or set it up as, as the video master, as, as the director, um, as the storyteller. So there's a lot more to drawing a guy on a canvas than just drawing a guy on a canvas. There's a lot of preparation. Um, so uh, I'm going to reselect him. I don't want him to be naked, but I also don't want him to be overdone so I'm just gonna add very simple values I'm gonna drop that level this way and um, now I'm just gonna raise that background value up is my flux on no it's not so I'm just raising that background value up. I'm gonna saturate all the way and just make it like a daytime value so that way his color and his color wash is all going to be it's all going to make sense. So men's uh, eyes tilt down on that corner, but in this case it's even more so because of the angle at which we're seeing the eyes. Oh no, did I unlock? I did unlock, didn't I? No? Oh, thank God, okay. And then I'm just going to bring the hair back. And I just don't really want the hair there anymore. Um, the hair shouldn't be kind of taking up too much of the uh, of what we're looking at so something like that as for the colors of the whole thing um, so it's very yellow and if you wanted to have it as yellow that's fine uh, you just got to make sure shadows are cooled down so I'm gonna cool down all shadows basically I'm just moving the, the eraser for shadows um, the slider for shadows and then deleting back at whatever the light can reach and leaving that as golden or yellow and then just playing around with opacity to get that all to, to work together that's really the secret to any skin tone but overall i think the skin tone is a touch too yellow altogether um and then there's just not a lot of white uh, so white exists on the skin even if it's dark skin uh, that's because the sun has a really strong presence to it. Before I mess around any more, I want to kind of get that sky color working. And then just play with levels to get things back up to being bright. And desaturate just a little bit for subtlety. And I'm, I'm going to follow this with an even more dodge tool because that's the secret to making stuff look sun-kissed is that extreme sudden climb in the values and then from there we can really uh, let that distort the edges of some stuff i don't like using dodge tool because it's so gross sometimes so i'm just going to do it with white and those are the areas that we can really zone in on because that's where he's getting the most sculpting um, I really don't like the eyes. I'm not feeling them, so I'm just going to black them out for the most part. Just because I want to capture more of his characteristics than just his eyes. And then I'm going to re liquefy the eyes just so everything is fit back together. Again, uh, all of that rim light kind of catching the side of his head. 
the side of his temple mostly. Um, I hate dodge tool, but I'm just gonna stick with it and then follow up with a with a brush in a second with a desaturator. So just get the skin to where you want it to be, and then that's when we can start bringing those extreme sun-kissed moments and just kind of let some of the face get eclipsed because I'm still going to delete and some of the body as well because I'm still going to delete where the sun can reach and those extreme highlights I added earlier so it's just a slight eclipsing do you see it it's it's barely there but it makes a big difference for that part of the sun that we don't see in the, the part of the character that we don't see because of the sun and because his the shadow of his ear um, the shadow of his head breaches, doesn't cover the entire ear. The ear breaches that shadow. We get a bit more of that on this side. Am I still? Yes, I am. That is why. Um, blur tool. So everything happens in layers. Trust the layers. Trust your reference. Always establish your light environment early. Or else you're just not, you're, there's nothing that can be, po there's nothing possible without it. But what you had in the before was you had these gray tones and you were picking daylight skin tones, which is why I'm cute to use those daylight skin tones here. But then you had a rim of blue. I mean, you're setting yourself up for failure like this. Just pick a daylight color that works for you. Um, pick a background color that works for your narrative and just stay with it. Okay, so we're almost done this sexy teenage heartthrob. Um, um, so yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, we, did, we changed a lot. There, a lot has been changed. A lot has been um, worked on, obviously. Uh, the before is not going to look very familiar uh, or connected to this. Um, but the point is, is that it's showing you the steps you can take in order to get better results with when you want to turn your studies into illustrations which a lot of you love to do you love to do it it's something that a lot of you are drawn to when you're studying that long you want to make something worthwhile um, and you don't want to uh, miss your opportunity i'm just going to boost things up one more time miss your opportunity to really mess with some uh, cool effects on your study that you worked so long on you just want to make a quick little portfolio piece with it I'm going to put that that glare, that light that I usually put. But let's take a look at the before and after. So before, <laughs> I know, it's completely different. I know I completely changed the illustration. But it's what I saw coming out of this illustration here. It's what I saw emerging from it. Um, it's the blue of the light behind him that inspired me to make some hair catching the light. It's the light on the character's skin tone. I know, I really changed it. Um, but it's, it's fun. It's fun. It was a fun little experiment. Um, and uh, uh, it just shows how safe you guys are being with your background values. You don't have to be that safe all the time. And just take a look at the ears he drew. This is what threw me off. <laughs> it was the ears. Excuse me. I went keyboard exploded um it was the ears that he drew that really um i was trying to just stick to them i was trying to stay true to that anatomy i kept the hair catching some light from the back catching some light from the side skin directly in the light here um somewhat uh it doesn't make much sense actually to have light on the show okay but whatever um and uh more more in the lines of i'm just trying to make it hit the side of everything moving down Yes, I know, I really changed it, but I, I want to show you guys how easy it is to make illustrations. Um, uh, it's basically what they wanted to draw versus what they actually drew. Reference is OP. Yes, building references, having references in your work, having all of that is really, really, really important um, because it changes everything. You get to basically get a model. You don't have to hire a model or anything. You can just get a model, uh, shape it to the way you want to see it. Um, and have your illustration visible before you before you even painted it, which helps you in everything. 
Um, I know I changed a lot today, but I hope this was a fun little experiment for you guys to see how easy it is to make illustrations once you get all your ducks in a row, get your background, get your reference, understand your narrative, understand the story so that you could really get a complete finish. Uh, this is so amazing to see how we could take our limited imagination to another level. Um, Ginger Harry and Brown Eyes is an OP. Ginger Hair and Brown Eyes is an OP combo. That is a killer combo right there. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, my master class is coming out next Wednesday um, at uh, in the evening of Tuesday night or Monday mor uh, or Wednesday morning uh, of the first of June. Um, my master class is the culmination of everything I know about portraits, so please look out for that if you're interested in it. It'll be around $80 to $90, um, and uh, I'll let you guys know uh, via everything, Instagram, subreddit, Twitter, Facebook, I will be uploading it as an announcement, so you all won't be able to miss it. It'll be everywhere, and it'll link you to my store, which will link you to my Gumroad, and there you'll be able to... Uh, purchase it if you're interested. Please consider supporting uh, through Patreon, even if it's just a dollar. If you learn something today, a dollar goes a long way if everybody joins. I know you may say somebody else will do it, but somebody else may not do it, and my goal is a thousand patrons, um, and uh, I hope a lot of people answer the call. It's just one dollar a month, uh, which goes a long, long way. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you guys next class, uh, Tuesday the 31st uh, at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you go to my store, Portrait Studio is there. It's currently on sale. It will no longer be on sale uh, on the 1st of June. So if you did use, if you did see Portrait Studio, you like how it works, Remember, that's not going to be on sale forever at the price that it's currently on. After June, that's all going down. Um, it's going to go back to, up to a regular price. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you guys uh, next class. Bye.